everybody. I'm Jesse Weber, and welcome to Law and Crime Now. Huge development. New charges have been announced in connection with the death of George Floyd out of Minneapolis. If you look at these new complaints that were released today, a lot to talk about here. We heard more about it from the Minnesota Attorney General Keith Ellison. We held a press conference earlier, and what did we learn? We learned that Derek Chauvin has been hit with an upgraded charge of second-degree murder. He had been facing third-degree. That's still on the table. But now second-degree, which carries with it potentially 40 years in prison. The other officers involved in this incident, Tu Tao, J. Alexander Kung, and Thomas Lane, they too, they have been charged with aiding and abetting second-degree murder and manslaughter. Those top charges, again, 40 years in prison. What we learned earlier today is that these officers are in the process of being taken into custody. I want to start right now with this video that you might have seen. It's an alternative video of the George Floyd arrest showing the involvement of these other officers. Take a look. Mom, I love you. Please, I love you. All right, let's get right into it. I'm joined today by my co-host, Linda Kenny Bodden, who's going to be helping us walk all through this. Joining her is her husband, renowned forensic pathologist, Dr. Michael Bodden, who conducted the independent autopsy of George Floyd, which was ordered by Floyd's family. It's great to have everyone here. On top of the fact, we have with us Law and Crime's very own Terry Austin. Doctor, want to start with you. As we try to understand these charges and we try to understand the role of these officers, I wanted to ask you, uh, if it wasn't for the involvement of the officers, if it merely was Derek Chauvin placing his knee on the back of George Floyd's neck, would George Floyd still be alive today? How much did these officers contribute to his death? They contributed to the death by adding to the uh, compression and inability of uh, George to um, breathe. Uh, what the uh, knee on the neck interfered with blood flow to the brain and breathing through the windpipe. The back uh, compression uh, caused the abdominal organs to move up to below the diaphragms, up toward the head area, and prevent the diaphragms from moving, which what is what makes us able to inhale and exhale. So when he couldn't inhale, he was saying, I can't breathe. And that was valid. He can't breathe if the diaphragm's not moving. So both contributed. How much each one could cause death by itself. Sufficient pressure on the neck can cause death. Sufficient pressure on the back can cause death. And in my opinion, the cause of death was a combination of the compression of the neck and the compression of the chest. How much each contributed might be a situation that's argued at the trial. But in my opinion, given the information right. we have, both of them contributed and both of them caused the death. Doctor, I'm so glad to have you. There's a lot that I want to get to, including what we learned or, or is being said in these complaints. Uh, Linda, I want to turn it over to you now, because the important question here, aiding and abetting, was the, were those the charges that you were expecting? And what can we make from the aiding and abetting uh, statute? Is, is this a tough charge to ultimately convict these officers of? Well, indeed, I don't think it is, Jesse, in, in this way. You know, aiding and abetting can be one fact or two facts. When the victim here, uh, the decedent, is saying he can't breathe and none of the officers are doing anything to allow him to breathe or suggesting to, uh, for instance, Chauvin, who was on his neck, to stop being on his neck, to interfere with what's going, you have an aiding and abetting. And it could be a number of facts. We will see when there is a document that's going to list what the facts are that the prosecution says uh, support the aiding and abetting charge, what they're relying on. But it can be one act, it could be one in act, not act. 
Hmm. Terry, I want to talk to you about the uh, second degree murder charge now, again, that uh, Mr. Chauvin faces and which the other officers have now been accused of taking a part of. So that was not the charge that the Floyd family was looking for. They were looking for first degree murder. As we heard from uh, Keith Ellison, this does not require intent to kill. This requires a different kind of intent. This requires intent to commit assault, which resulted in death. Your reaction to the second degree murder charge as opposed to first degree, is it enough? The good news is the second degree charge carries with it a penalty of 40 years. So that's the good news. I think the disappointing news is there was intent here and they're charging the officer with second degree, but they're saying it's in conjunction with this felony assault, and it's without intention. And so I think that falls short of what the family is looking for. I think it falls short of what the community is looking for. We know already premeditated first degree, intention second degree, third degree depraved mind without regard to life. The second degree that they're doing here is a nuance. The felony murder is a nuance. Yes, it's second degree. Yes, it carries 40 years. But I believe that they need to have the intent. And that's the only thing that's going to really satisfy the community if they recognize what's going on. And they're saying he intended to hurt Floyd, resulted in his death, but he didn't intend to kill him. This is interesting. I don't know if we're going to see an upgrade now to first degree, but they have upgraded it to second degree. Now, Dr. Bodden, again, I'm so happy to have you on. I want to play you something. This was from uh, the press conference that was held uh, earlier on in the week when you discussed the health condition of George Floyd. How healthy was he? Let's take a look at that. Yes. Thank you for clarifying that. Yeah, I'd just, just like to, to add on in my coronavirus uh, uh, susceptible age group that I wish I had the same coronary arteries that uh, Mr. Floyd had that we saw at the autopsy. Okay, so Dr. Bodden, I want to read you what we learned from this new complaint that came out today. And in this amended complaint, it says that the medical examiner didn't find ev evidence of mechanical asphyxia, which is what you said is the cause of death, and that, uh, that he died from cardiopulmonary arrest while being restrained by the officers. On top of that, they said that he had fentanyl in his system, that he uh, recently used methamphetamines, and that he had a heart disease, and that these factors contributed to the death. That is at odds with your findings. What is your response to this? My response is that uh, the... In the inability to breathe is what caused the death. It's just if somebody's shot in the head and has cancer all over his body, it's the uh, gunshot wound to the head that's the immediate cause of death. The uh, coronary arteries, when we did, and Dr. Wilson is another doctor, and I did the second autopsy together, uh, the part of the heart that was in the remains was perfectly normal. The part, there was a part of it that was retained for further examination by the uh, medical examiner. And I would uh, adopt that under the recent release of information. It could have had coronary artery disease, which uh, we didn't see in the part that was left to us. But whether he had coronary artery disease or not, he did not die from it. He had that the day before. According to the family, he never had any problem with coronary arteries. He did have hyper, high blood pressure. His heart was slightly enlarged, but we did not find anything that in and of itself could cause or contribute to the death under these circumstances. And I would point out just one thing in a previous discussion. The officer that was in the leaning on his back with his knees on his back that you saw in the different video, that was part of the cause of death. I, in my opinion, that would be more than just standing by and not acting, but that was part of the cause of death. I think the other findings are uh, additional and interesting, but not part of the cause of death. And I think both of us agreed that it was the restra restraint that caused the death. That's why it's called a right. homicide. And, and 
Right, exactly. And, and the many has ruled it a homicide as well. Linda, we have about a minute before we have to hit our break. I want to ask you real quick. Tu Tao, he was the officer that was not directly involved in holding Floyd down, yet he was charged with aiding and abetting as well. Is that the right call? Yes, because he didn't do anything to stop what was happening. And if you're looking at it, and I was a prosecutor also, along with a defense attorney who's handled a lot of these cases, when you're looking at it, the person who doesn't take action, that's misconduct. And if it's misconduct, it also is an aiding and abetting under these circumstances, especially since, if what I read is true, that Tutau has a lot of prior incidents dealing with excessive force. And uh, again, he didn't have any punishment. Right. Right. And look, there's a lot to discuss. Linda and I are going to break it down uh, when we come back, uh, because there is so much with this breaking development in the George Floyd case. We'll be right back.